Okay, it looks like it's a little bit past 6.30, maybe 6.31 or 6.32. Go ahead and call this meeting to order and ask for the roll to be called, please. Patterson? Here. Thorsland? Here. Eisenman? Cortado? Here. Goss? King Taylor? Esri? Present. Thank you. We do have a quorum, but barely. Uh, then move to the approval of agenda and addendum. Uh, we have a few corrections to make. Addendum number two, instead of being IX, should actually be nine, should actually be XI, I believe. Um, so 11 instead of nine, new business. And that, the other were also um, with barely having a quorum, um, Mr. Thorsland needs to kind of cut out probably fairly quick. So wondering if we could maybe move up, let's see, kind of the more important items to try and get through them. It'd be go ahead and take the new business information only. Um, so 7G, the Vermilion County Land Bank, then go on to 8, I would assume. So do, do 7G first then just go on down through the agenda as is. And and then, and then, and then what, John, John are you saying? Yeah, and do the rest of the, yeah, and do the rest of the information only at the end. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. So, well, 7G is the Vermilion County Land Bank. Eight is the proposed land bank with Champaign County. Okay. Yes. So I guess if if we're willing to do that, because the other information only, yes, it'd be nice to hear the information. But if we don't get to them, if Eric has to cut out before we get to them, they are information only and not quite so important as the land bank with the people that are in the audience. So if that's okay, um, we'll, like I say, we'll, we'll just start off with 7G and then just go on down through the rest of the agenda and then come back to 7A through F at the end of the agenda. Um, so if that's okay, is there such a motion? Moved by Mr. Patterson, seconded by Mr. Thorsland. Discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye, all opposed, nay. Thank you, that's approved. Um, we'll then move to approval of minutes from May 9th, 2019. Any corrections? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Thorsland, seconded by Ms. Portado. All in favor, please say aye. Aye, all opposed, nay. Thank you, that's approved. Move on to public participation. I have two up here. Uh, ask you please limit your um, comments to five minutes. Um, first, I have Mr. Charles Smith. If you'd please step forward and, or, or sit at this chair and ask you to please turn the microphone on and state your name for the record and then proceed. Thank okay, you. No. Thank you. Um, my name is Charles Smith. I'm the mayor of the village of Rantoul, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight about the land bank. And uh, I have uh, some folks with me. I would like to introduce them first of all. Scott Eisenhower, my village, my village uh, administrator is with us, and Ken Turner, our uh, community development uh, officer is with us. Uh, before I get into this, I'd like to give you just a bit of background about Vermilion County Land Bank. They were established about three years ago. And we've been working in conjunction with the, with the land bank uh, in Vermilion County to see if we can uh, commit or um, uh, combine a coalition between the two, the two communities and also the two counties. So first of all, I'd like to start out by just saying that uh, what is a land bank? 
and the land bank has been created to assist communities like ours in Danville with issues associated with vacant land, blighted areas, land assemblages, reinvestment, and property stewardship. Uh, the thing to remember is that a land bank is a tool with no specific function. It has multiple functions, so that it brings a lot of versatility to communities. Each community has different needs, as reflected by ours we being smaller and Champaign uh, and Urbana being larger. Each community, uh, <coughs> uh, currently uh, Vermillion County's land bank includes 17 of their local government uh, bodies. A land bank is also formed to provide the county and its local members with additional resources to target activities that enhance the quality of life in those communities. Uh, current land banks are engaged in targeting acquisition and disposition of property, demolition of property for member communities, and securing grant funding or grant funding to support future growth. The other thing that will have the impact here is that the communities involved in, and participate in this should, should see an increase in their EAV and lowering their property tax rate because it has a consequence of this. Uh, how many land banks exist in Illinois? There's a total of four land banks in Illinois currently and two in creation, and we are one of those that are in creation. I want to note that the state of Illinois has provided funding to, to expand and initiate a land bank, including Champaign County, so there's money available. How will this land bank be funded? The current balance of the Vermillion Land Bank is $300,000. The Village of Van Tools received a grant for $150,000. Champaign County is not being asked to contribute any dollars at the initial onset of this project. We would ask for in-kind contributions, your vacant land, blighted areas, cash grants, property transfers uh, to the land bank for resale or disposition or assistance with the operations provided by the land bank. The land bank at that point would keep a portion of the transaction as a fee to recover the initial cost of our operations. If future financial requests are made of Champaign County, the county would be included in those negotiations and talks. What initiated forming the Champaign County Land Bank? Champaign County members explored forming a land bank in Champaign County and retained e-property innovations to complete a feasibility analysis to evaluate that proposed effort. The analysis concluded that a land bank in Champaign County would offer members of the community direct benefit and could operate under a number of different uh, structures. And one of those structures is including the culmination of Vermillion County and Champaign County together. Uh, the analysis uh, recommended that interested members explore expanding the Vermillion County Land Bank uh, with Champaign County to leverage their experience that they've had for the last three years of being in existence and capacity. The Village of Rantoul has taken the lead in securing an invitation from the Vermillion County Land Bank by an intergovernmental agreement. All members involved in this uh, coalition would be voting members. The goal of this endeavor will be to dispose of 40 properties per year. So we do have some goals set as well. And it's reflective of trying to utilize the taxpayer dollars as well as we possibly can. The success of a multi-county land bank depends on the number of members and their engaged participation, as you would well know and expect. I consider participation by Champaign County as a vital part of our land bank success. And I appreciate your time. Do we want me to take some questions here or not? Uh, we do that. We'll do that later. All right, on. Thank sounds you. good. Thank I you, appreciate the opportunity and thank you very much. Thank you. And then I have Ms. Tammy Freeling Vogus. Good evening. Um, I'm Tammy Freeling Vogus uh, for the Village of St. Joseph. I'm the mayor in St. Joseph. And um, if you need my address or anything, yeah. Uh, I actually did not. Uh, plan prepared necessarily to speak, but since I'm here, hey, I might as well take advantage of that. Um, uh, the only thing that I would like to speak on, um, I know at your last meeting you um, were presented some amendments to the solar farm ordinances, and uh, uh, we've been working with some of the other communities, actually 
uh, Rantoul is one that was uh, participating in our um, letter that we had presented uh, to the board previously in regards to the first set of solar farms that had um, come to the Champaign County Board, um, but then also when we were working on uh, the amendments to the ordinance. Um, basically, all that I, I want to say, I appreciate you looking at the amendments. I know that it was kind of a tie at the last ELOC meeting that, that you had and that it you know was going to be discussed further. Um, we basically, the, the communities that um, we, we had the attached letter there with the various different mayors, um, all that we're asking for is to um, be considered in what comes forward to the board with solar farms. Um, the, we would really love to have our mile and a half back. Um, not so much, you know, that we just want to automatically have that and say we're adamantly going to be against solar farms or anything like that. Uh, the biggest thing is that we'd like to be a part of the conversation. We'd like to have a seat at the table. Um, when it comes to, you know, other solar farms that may be coming our way to our community, and that way we can be a part of the conversation um, so that we can, you know, look at our comp plans along with you guys to see um, exactly what those may or may not mean to the future of our village um, as far as any future growth or how it would affect our future growth. And um, because solar farms are, um, even though they're, they're different than subdivisions, they, they will have a long-term impact um, on our communities for, you know, up to 40 years. Um, and especially if we want to try and keep, you know, compact growth to our communities. You know, if you have a, a solar farm within a half mile of our community, um, that would, you know, force maybe any future development um, beyond that mile and a half maybe. And then now you run into um, your country subdivisions and things that we, we try to avoid. Um, but the, the biggest part that I, I, I guess I'm, I'm making a statement for the other mayors and other communities. Um, Kelly, um, the zoning um, administrator there in Muhammad, I know worked hard with John Hall to maybe come up with some um, compromising amendments that I, I think would work both for all of us um, in these situations. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm here just um, speaking from the heart that as the mayor of St. Joseph that uh, I would really like for you to consider those amendments and to keep us in mind um, to, uh, like I said, basically open the door so that we could be a part of those conversations and work together. Um, it might be such a thing, like I, I'm just thinking of the village of St. Joe as an example uh, with the, the past solar farms that came to town. We had one that was very willing to work with us and it was great and, and it was a positive situation for us in that solar group. Um, but the other ones I think could have cared less if we had a seat at the table or not, and you know they were just there to, to move their solar farm through. Um, but, but anyway, I, I think there's agreements that maybe would be beneficial for our villages too, that if we do um, have a solar farm just outside of our community within a half mile, or and I understand that um, the substations are close to the villages, and that's the reason why they like to be so close, but um, on the other hand, you know, uh, if, if it's important enough to get those solar farms, you know, in our, our county, then um, if they're just set outside a little further, the community, yes, they might have to pay for a little more infrastructure to get to those substations. And grant you, I'm not an expert on the solar farms, so I don't know how all, all the mechanics work there, but um, I, I just would um, please ask for you to please take our villages and communities into consideration and allow us to be um, a part of the conversation. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to speak during public participation? Seeing none, we will close that and move on to communications. Are there any communications from the members of the committee or, or Darlene or Geraldo or Jody? Seeing none, we will then move on to seven new business for information only. We have, we're going straight to G, the Vermilion County Land Bank. And John, are you going to lead this off? Uh, actually, are we going to have the presentation? Or Mr. Something? Pat O'Shaughnessy is here to okay. uh, speak to the committee. Go right ahead, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Thank you for having us over. We appreciate the opportunity. I also have with us tonight Wes Barrett, who is our 
chairman of the board, a member of the Vermilion County Board, and also our chair of the Vermilion County Land Bank Board, and John Heckler, who is our one employee of the Vermilion County Land Bank. So thanks for being here, and thank you, Mr. Smith, or Mayor Smith, for your um, comments, too. We, um, we actually started almost four years ago. <clears throat> I came on about three years ago on a contract basis. I'm a small business owner in Danville, recently retired, uh, that agreed to, and me and my son agreed to, to tackle the land bank. It was actually the brainchild of, of um, our former mayor, Mayor Eisenhower, and County Board Chair Mike Marin got together and decided that it would be a good thing for Vermilion County. Uh, I, I was a, have a title insurance company, so it fit right in with us, and we had the room and the space and the ability to do the searches and stuff, so we agreed to, to do that. We started with a grant from Vermilion County of um, $50,000 the first year. They filed up with 40000 the second year. Um, the city um, also kicked in 5000 additional dollars in the county did. So about $100,000 total is the only public funding we've had from municipalities. Our uh, 17, 16 members plus the county are 17th. Uh, they were not charged to come in. Um, it did not cost anything to join the land bank. You did get a seat at the table, as Mayor Smith said. Um, with that came veto power, so you could never do a project in Rankin or Georgetown or Westville if Rankin, Georgetown, Westville did not want you to do that project. So with that seat comes the veto power um, to do that. You need um, ho a home rule power state or home rule power city to be able to have a land bank. The state of Illinois passed legislation 25 plus years ago that created land banks, but like the state of Illinois, um, I guess they foresaw they were going to be broke 25 years from then too because they gave no funding source. If you study land banks around the country, the big ones are in um, parts of Indiana, Georgia, um, Michigan, Florida, Pennsylvania, and they all, their legislation that enabled the creation of land banks also came with a funding source. Um, Wes and I met the director of the, I can't say the name of the county, but it's where Toledo is. And it's about a uh, county three times the size of Vermilion County, so about 300,000 people just under that. Uh, his funding source is a percent of the delinquent taxes before they go to the tax sale. Um, they get a percent of that, brings in $3.7 million for his land bank for the year. That's everyone in Ohio gets that. So they created that funding source. There is talk in Illinois. Um, he mentioned the, the different land banks that are already here. Cook County, and, which covers inner Cook County, is a huge land bank that's been operating 20 plus years. Um, the other is South Suburban Land Bank, which is Similar to us, in fact, our memorandum of agreement is their memorandum of agreement between the municipalities. It's 20 plus southern suburbs of Cook County that form South Suburban Land Bank. Also very successful, also very flush with cash. Uh, one big reason, one big difference is the, is the uh, onset of developers that they have available there. Uh, they've been able to do a lot of development, buy, get dilapidated properties during the Depression and have people redevelop them and then sell them, and they are obviously able to keep the money. So they were not interested in really helping to further any legislation at the state level that would provide a funding source for land banks as they're created. They now have said they are, and they would like to lobby with us for that. So I think that may be a, a source down the, down the road, which is vitally important, I think, if these are going to, regional land banks are going to work. You know, we, we have survived on... Um, Volunteer labor by the executive directors, um, three grants, the land bank capacity grant, which they gave away 1.6 million. We got 325,000 of that, and uh, Rantoul also got that grant. They were given out to, I think, 11 communities. I think that's right, Kim, maybe. 11 communities. Um, they are really IDA, Illinois Housing Development Authority, is one that granted those. They're looking for regional land banks. Uh, they were very supportive of us. We've, all, we've also received two of their APP demo grants, which we've used to um, demolish, rehab some homes in Vermilion County. But I think they like the idea of regional banks. Uh, the economies of scale. Uh, Freeport received one of the grants. They are now going with Rockford, Freeport, and Belvedere. So Boone, Winnebago, and Stevenson County are forming, I think it's Northern Illinois, maybe, or Northwest Illinois Land Bank is one that will be soon formed. Um, that's when we opened it up, and our board decided to, to look outside, too. Uh, we had talked with Rantoul, Scott knows this, um, five years ago, discussions were with Rantoul to begin to do a regional one to very begin with, and that just didn't happen, and we went with the Vermilion County Land Bank. So um, our board agreed to open up our memorandum of agreement and our bylaws to 
uh, allow outside communities to come in. And I, you know, I don't think it will stop if Champaign communities begin to join with Champaign. I can envision an East Central Illinois that could include Iroquois, Edgar, McLean. Um, you know, the, 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 the possibilities are endless to do that. And I think you need to do that for the economies of scale and the different resources that the different communities bring, whether it's labor, whether it's the place down the street called the U of I and, and young talent and young um, people that want to get involved while they're in school, but potentially too. But um, that's what we're looking for. You know, we could continue to operate as we ha as we are, but um, it needs full time staff. You know, I'm a part time volunteer as it is. Uh, we've never generated the cash to pay a staff, and uh, we have not taken that. But it needs a full time work, and I think as you combine county to county, you can hire full time staff, a full time executive director. People have been, are writing grants, both IDA and, and federal grants, to do that. Our biggest, one of our biggest problem is um, IDA grants are all for housing; they're not for commercial. And every community has a junkyard, Charlie, and it involves a commercial property, not a house. Whether it's the old bar or the old Rankin has two old schools that are both in a condition of half torn down, or three quarters torn down, or a quarter torn down. And um, IDA doesn't recognize commercial properties in the grants that we've had so far. So. There's some opportunity for that, and um, we we've been successful with the with the staffing that we've had. We've done um, several projects throughout Vermilion County. Hoopston has probably been our biggest participant, and you kind of you get what you put into it. And Hoopston's been very active. We've helped them maintain some old historic properties through their Lorraine Theater, Save the Lorraine Foundation, um, and we've taken some properties off the trustee. We worked with each of our individual communities. A lot of what we do is education. Um, and we've we've done that. A lot of them want to get rid of Junkyard Charlie, but you got to have possession. And you know we've stressed to them over and over and over. You know, we can't come in and take somebody's property; they own it. It's still America, but you can get it. And we've really stressed the trustee sale. Scott used the trustee sale better than anybody uh, to take those properties out of the hands of slum lords that would put a couple grand in them and rent them out. Uh, we have stress that to communities and in fact the house we just tore down in Catlin last week that the village did take it a year ago from the trustees seven hundred forty nine dollars you have at least in our county you have it you have possession of it now you can either board it up and wait for us to have money or for your community to have money or for both of you have money and get the thing torn down but you have to have possession the key for, the key thing to remember and why we have the communities join us is you need the home rule community because you can take home rule powers out to those communities so um, you know, a great example is the new Love's truck stop that was built in Oakwood. They were in court for over two years to try to reduce the taxes on that. A lot of times in commercial properties, more the commercial than, than residential, the problem with getting a junkyard Charlie property off the books is that the real estate taxes, delinquent taxes, which the tax buyers don't even want, have grown to a point that it makes it unsaleable because it's worth more than the building is. Land bank has a, a strategic power. If you have home rule, you can take it. And as long as there's a lien on the property, you can basically get, you can reduce the taxes and put it back in a sale and error position and get the property, reduce the taxes down so we can get the property sold, get the property redeveloped and get the property back on the tax rolls, which is the ultimate goal of any land bank is to get properties out of municipalities' names, out of the trustees' names, out of the tax sale names and back in individuals' names so that they start paying taxes again. And as Mayor Smith said, your EAV can, can benefit from that too. So we're here to answer any questions. I think Scott probably has some, he started this. He has probably more knowledge than I do, so uh, from his standpoint, but we'll be here to answer questions too. So open the floor for discussion questions. Mr. Thorsman. Yeah, of course it's me, right? Um, well, first of all, you, you said some things, the, 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 the mayor and yourself, uh, that were important for us to hear. One was that you didn't want any money from us. Uh, because we didn't really have a lot of money to give you right now, but we do have properties. Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, right now, how many properties do you have sort of in play? And what is your average, or what did last year, 2018, look like as far as taking those properties from the land bank state to back to an individual owner? How many were you able to, to in set 18, free? In 18, we probably did. Now, it's kind of different. We also, under an agreement with the city of Danville, the properties that Danville had taken off of the trustee sale over the last seven, eight years plus, they turned those over to us to market for them. 
Uh, so we, we also market theirs with an agreement that they get so much, we get so much um, for marketing those properties. So in 18, um, we were probably involved in about 20 to 25 transactions total, whether it was ours or the city of Danville's that we marketed for them. Uh, some of those were pass-throughs uh, with the Lorraine Theater. Where we took it off the trustee's sale and then gave it to them with an agreement of rehabbing. Um, an example, the old, old National Bank building, which is their tallest building in Hoopston, filled with marble, filled with copper. Um, they had people that were interested in the trustee sale to steal that, strip it, and then leave it. Uh, we took it off. We, we have the power, like any municipality, to take those off the sale before the sale. We did that. Now it's, it's rented. All three floor, four floors, I think, are rented out on that now. They did some restoration on it. So we, we do a lot of that pass-through. We did some other properties where we took it off and immediately sold it to a neighbor, whether it was a bare lot or a property, to, for them to rehab themselves. Uh, we have rehab conditions with reverter clauses on the deeds on it. So, so right now, as far as our inventory right now, we're doing a big development um, where we are acquiring the property for a developer in Danville, and we probably have 20, 25, we just closed on another one, 25 properties there. Uh, we also just took title to the old St. Elizabeth Hospital property in Danville, which is 6.7 acres of green developable land in the middle of a neighborhood where they tore the hospital down and then cleaned it up. Um, we own a couple properties in Hopeston where we tore the properties down. We own the house, the property in Catlin that we just tore down. We own one in Georgetown that we are tearing down next week. Uh, so we have, we probably have 35 properties in inventory right now, okay, of which so 25 of those will go. Pardon me? You have about 35 right now. Last year you were able to transfer or pass through about 25. 20 to 25, yeah, I don't so know. So was that a typical year? Was that a good well, year? Well, we really, we've only been three full years. Right. So um, it's, it's this yeah, way. Yeah, and it, yeah, it can, it can, it can be proportional to the amount of time and money you put into it. I have no doubt. Okay. The, the money question you asked, go ahead. I'll, well, my other question is, uh, you say, you know, your, your uh, Rantoul, of course, is very interested, and I can understand that completely, and it would help if the whole county was part of it. You envision this regional thing. Uh, would you want uh, some staffing help from Champaign County? In lieu well, of, I don't, I think. Are you looking for us to maybe provide people, I know you have more volunteers is always No, good, I, I, I envision the land bank hiring a full-time executive director who's not going to be me. Okay. Um, and, you know, as much staff as they have money for. Okay. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it, it definitely is how many hours you're going to put into it and how much money you can pay those people to do it. Um, they... They can be, by statute, county employees. We have found that, um, and we can reimburse the county. Uh, okay. I think South Suburban is doing some of that. I think it's South Suburban, or maybe it's the new Freeport one. Or they're going to be actually county employees reimbursed 100% by the land bank. Uh, so you can, uh, you can offer an, a little more attractive benefit package than you would having a two-person office or a three-person office to begin with. I think the, the projections Brian did started with an executive, sec executive director and a an assistant that would be you know, a grant writer too at that point. Right, uh, and you, you would know. use that grant money in part to help pay for that. Uh, and we then can. And of course uh, the profit from that. The other positives I see is when you sort of put these into a collective for marketing and things, you know, we're, we're talking later on about, you know, how far out does the village want to look in the future. There's also infill that goes the other way and what I think the land bank probably does well is to take properties that are in these areas that are in within the boundaries already that aren't being fully utilized. And that's that's a, a big positive for me. I like to see infill development. I like to see any way to promote that because I think, you know, if you keep it if you keep the core alive, then you tend not to feel the need to spread in many different directions. And I think the, the farther way. out you reach, the more resources you reach. Um, we lack developers in Danville in Vermilion County. Uh, we have very few. The, the old guard contractors have retired. Um, they did not sell. They didn't have sons to take over other than one. And we don't have, you know, we'd love to do a lot of, we, to do more rehab work. We can't find anybody to do it. I, you know, I think you would bring that. Other counties would bring people that are interested in doing rehab work because you've done it. I mean, look at some of your downtowns. You've done that. Exactly. Uh, so you're right. It, I mean, it just expands the horizon and the resources. I think Land Bank can become a one-stop shop for any piece of property that's available, whether you're you're an investor, whether you're a, a redeveloper, 
a neighborhood group. They're going to they're gonna know where they can go. They're going to know the grants available. They're going to know the regional grants, local grants, the facade grants, anything that's available. That's what the land bank needs to be. Um, and, and then you're going to get into the commercial properties, which is where you make your money. You're not going to make much money on the residential. You're going to make it on the commercial properties, but you have to have the ability to get them to begin with. And those grants are there. You know, there's $450,000 worth of grants. Um, and I told Brent Denson, who is I'm an attorney up in, he was with Angel Glink in, in Chicago. He, he, uh, he also got a land bank capacity grant. So he is consulting with land banks and he's helped Rain Tool. He's helped us, he helped us originally. We had to pay him when he did it, but he wasn't on the grant when we started ours. But, um, you know, he, I just had a discussion with him yesterday realizing that the, the, the IDA grants are reimbursable. So they're there, but you've got to spend the money first. Now, we don't have 300, we actually have 390, 300, we've got a 40 and a, a 30 and a 325 right now. But, you know, we don't have that money in our checking account today. Um, we could go borrow it against it. They won't take, they won't let you use it as collateral, but we've got a local lender that has told us, he's on our board too, that um, they would loan it to us knowing that it's coming back. So some of that, you know, you have those grants, but they're not cash. You've got to spend it first. So you got to, you say you, we're not asking for cash. If you're going to hire people at some point, cash infusion is going to be needed by all the people involved. And we've had discussions on our board about having a, an annual fee uh, based on a per capita basis or an assessed valuation basis where some of the, you know, Rankin might pay $500 or $1,000. Uh, but, you know, by the time you get 40 communities, you know, that can add up to be paying the salary of your executive director with not a lot of hurt on any county. You know, I don't think you're ever going to get somebody to consistently give us $50,000 like Vermilion County did to get us started. Uh, you know, you're not going to have that, but, you know, again, the, the larger you are, the, the, little, the little amounts add up. Thank you. Ms. Furtado. This is kind of neat. I heard a whole story today about that, the Lorraine Theater over in Hoops Den on the radio today. So they're a good group. Around. They're yeah, very, very active. Real cool, cool they're, project. Their director's on Hoops Den City Council, so he's, he's very active in... Yeah, it's, it's really, it sounded like a real real cool project. And they were saying it was like, a, I think like a father and a son or something like that that were working on it. It was pretty neat. Um, I, and I'm always a big fan of regional planning instead of just, you know, everybody sort of going off in their own direction. I do, I, I guess I'm confused about one thing. I thought in our conversation a, a month ago, so maybe I, I just am misremembering, that there was something about, uh, like, that it was going to cost us 90 grand or 80 grand or something, so there was some some sort of figure that was in there, but now, so I just want to make sure that we're clear, because it seems like maybe the conversation shifted, or maybe I'm, I'm misremembering. No, you're remembering, that may have been my fault, but the conversation has shifted, and... Um, well, it's, you know, our board was of the opinion, we funded $100,000, $95,000, and you know, if, if we're going to open up what we've done, it'd be nice to have a cash infusion to be able to, to take it to the next step. We realized that money's probably not there, not there immediately, and that's when we started talking to our board about the membership fee, and maybe it comes over a time period, but it also may be in kind. It may be a piece of land that is already owned that can be marketed and sold and used for that, too. Um, it could be office space. It, it could be personnel, but... Those things are all money, too, in the end. Further discussion? Of course, Jody or Geraldo, feel free to speak up if you have questions. Um, or if any anyone else, Mr. Eisenhower, if you have any anything you'd like to add, feel free to. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity, and I'll make it quick. I understand uh, the, the consciousness towards time. Uh, let me just say, uh, to add what Mr. O'Shaughnessy and the mayor have talked about so far here this evening, one of the other things, particularly in the commercial line, that tends to hold an investor back from uh, taking a chance on a commercial piece of property are the liens that are held against that property. And again, when we talk about the home rule authority that a land bank has, one of those is the elimination of those liens against a property. So if someone were to come in, um, were interested in a commercial property, and yet um, perhaps that commercial property was not a good investment simply because of the uh, mountainous number of liens that were placed against that property, 
um, it would typically sit vacant. Now with the land bank, that becomes a great opportunity for an investor to step in and take that property. So uh, again, I think there are just a lot of great opportunities. Certainly uh, when I was in Danville, we saw the great need for it, which is the reason why we began this path. Um, now with my present role in Rantoul, we also see a great need for it. But I, I think what is also important is that it is not just Rantoul. In Champaign County, we have been meeting with other leaders of communities within Champaign County. Um, they, I think, are waiting for us to take the first step and then hopefully Champaign County to take the next step. Uh, we will be passing a resolution next Tuesday evening uh, formally adopting the agreement to move into what is now known as the Vermilion County Land Bank and what we hope will become the East Central Illinois Regional Land Bank. So. Um, once we take that step, and hopefully Champaign County takes that step as well, I think you'll see many communities throughout the county recognize the benefits. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, while he's up at the chair, assuming he's willing to answer questions, any questions for Mr. Eisenhower? Or, okay. And if there's no further discussion, or anyone else with your group want to have anything else they care, would care to add? Go ahead, Tammy. Yeah. Well, come forward and speak in the microphone for the record, please. <laughs> Since you're here. <laughs> um, I actually, what, what I had attended the meeting for was to be here in support of the land bank um, originally, and, and then I didn't actually realize it was all tied together. But anyway. Um, I, from being the mayor of St. Joseph, um, I have attended these meetings. Um, I think it is an attractive thing. We're a non-home rule community in St. Joseph. So for us um, to be able to be a part of something like this would be beneficial to the village of St. Joe. I, I'm still learning a lot about how the land bank works and, and how it may work for a village like ours. But I can see the benefit there because we are such a small community and I, we don't have the staff, we don't have the knowledge that they would um, bring to us. So um, for us to be a part of the land bank, um, it, you know, like I said, to what degree it may benefit us, I'm not 100% sure at this point. But from the meetings that I've attended and the um, information that I've gotten so far, um, I definitely see that it could be a plus for a community our size. Thank you. Thank you. Last chance. Any? Oh, sure. Just ask you to please state your name Ken. and then. I'm Ken. Ken Turner. I'm the uh, community development director for uh, uh, the village of Rantoul. And last but not least, I'd just like to say thank you all for having us. Um, thank Vermillion County for coming to the show. I really appreciate uh, you guys listening to us. You can see that our support is here and we would very much uh, welcome your support as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now last call for any final discussion on this. Seeing none, we'll move on then to um, eight, the county executive discussion regarding proposed land bank. Uh, Darlene, do you wanna speak to this first, being as it's county executive? Sure. Um, basically, I'm just here tonight to listen to what was said and to hear what the board is concerned about in terms of whether or not they would like to do an intergovernmental agreement. If the board um, feels like they would like to pursue this, then I can work with them to try to develop an agreement to bring back to the full board. Um, but I'm just, I'm trying to hear what your concerns are tonight or if there's other things I need to be considering. Okay, so with that, is there any comments, I guess, more specifically, directed towards Darlene that anyone would like to make? Ms. Furtado? Um, I just did want to mention that the, the Building Trades Council for our region is also the East Central Illinois Building Trades Council, so that might dovetail really nice, and I feel like that they might have, like we were talking about rehab and stuff like that, they might have some um, stuff to offer, you know, so that they might be uh, a, a good group to bring to the table. I don't know, you might you might know somebody over there. Mr. Thorsland. Yeah, I, I would uh, I would be in support of you sort of entering into a dialogue with them. I think 
you know, we've touched on a few questions, a few of my questions. We've actually talked about this for a while as a committee and in the agenda meeting. And uh, some of those questions have been answered tonight, and that's helpful. So I would be interested in seeing what, when you have time to sit and really hash out some details, what Champaign County could bring to the table and what would be expected uh, in return and uh, what the two groups could do. And I like Stephanie's idea. I already pictured an apprentice program with the Building Trades Council going into rehab in Pillsbury. So there's all kinds of possibilities, I think. And I agree with the, the whole group. I think the, the bigger you can do this, the, the more beneficial it becomes for everyone that's part of it. So. I'll just take a minute. I, I at this point in time, I'm definitely still interested. I, I, I'm definitely still interested in pursuing this. I mean, I haven't heard anything that throws up a big roadblock to me. That's just like, whoa, stop. Nope, I don't want to go any farther. I mean, no, I, I'm, I'm still in favor of definitely going forward. I mean, not going to say that something won't come up, but at this point in time, I'm not seeing anything personally that's a big red flag or even a caution flag. So. That's okay. kind of my opinion. So, <laughs> so it sounds like okay, the go forward. elect committee, forward, I guess, is okay. at this point in time <laughs> in favor of per pursuing moving forward still. Okay. I guess my last question would just be if there's any, you know, the negotiations haven't taken place about the different things, if there would be any cash expected, um, would there be, I mean, I'd like to get some idea of a limit here. Um, I don't know if you can. That's a tough question yeah. with them in the I, room. So. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, what is the most, what's the most you want to give these guys? No, um, I'm just well, trying to well, say. Well, we know I'm we started so out with this 90000 I think it was yeah. 50K, 40K. Right, we started out with a $90,000 yeah. possibility yeah. Um, as, uh, you know, to buy in at the level of the other county at this point. We now are hearing that maybe that wouldn't be necessary at all. So anywhere in between there sounds like it might be okay and potentially that could include a small amount of cash. We don't, we realize we don't have a lot of cash. Is that am I hearing that right? Yeah, and I think okay. that you know, we have some properties and potentially a right. new property in play. So right, and there's a lot of in kind things. Oh, not just Champaign not County, just Champaign but all the parts. But okay, all the okay, so that makes it even more reasonable, I think. Okay, just checking. And if we're like throwing things in the hat of in kind things, one is something I really enjoy doing and haven't gotten to do in a long time, but I like writing historic preservation grants, and I've done a lot of them, so if there's ever a property that that relates to, I don't know if that would help, but I'd, yeah. be, I'd love to do that. I, well, or, yeah, I other really, things really we have, we have GIS here. Yeah. We have, there's lots right. of other things I think that would be useful, so I'll let you that. Okay, thank you. Final thoughts before we move on? Okay, thank you all. Uh, we'll Yes, thank you for coming, definitely. We'll then move on to nine new business items to be approved by ELUC. We have A, the Recreation and Entertainment License, Fisher Community Fair, 226 East Sangamon Avenue, Fisher, for July 10th through July 14th, 2019. Is there such a motion? Moved by Ms. Furtado. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Patterson, discussion on this. Of course, the Fisher Community Fair has been around for, I don't know how many years, but it's an, uh, one or two at least, I think. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure the sheriff has <laughs> written off on this for Patsy Petrie. Uh, all in, seeing no discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Uh, then we have B, direction regarding proposed zoning ordinance text amendment for photovoltaic, photovoltaic solar farm requirements in response to municipal concerns. Uh, is there, does someone care to make a motion to start off or do we want to discuss it just a little bit more first? Just ask, turn your microphone on would be the only thing, Mr. Yeah, Thorne. Sorry. Go, go uh, right just making sure, you know, maybe for clarity before I make an official motion. Uh, Attachment C draft uh, gives us all this time we talked about to have extra dialogue, and that it keeps the, the half mile 
and the Cougar excluded. Is that correct, or did, am I reading this wrong? That would be B. That would be B. C okay. is the full, the full amendment, as All was right. in front of the committee last month. It adds the time, and it increases the minimum separation to a mile and a half in full expectation that that would be waived if, if, if suitable. Okay. B, B is, is the, the half mile starting point. Yes. yes. Okay. And then, well, then I would entertain a, well, not, a, I'm sorry. I would uh, suggest Go a around. motion to adopt uh, the, uh, the form as described in attachment B. Second, it's so a move by Mr. Thorslin, Mr. Patterson, second. Is there a discussion? Uh, well, no, I think go right ahead, Mr. Floyd, Thorson, since you, yeah. Both made. of them have this. I think what's important to, for people like in St. Joe is this gives us a lot more time to hear comments from the communities. I think that uh, on some level, uh, a lot of the things I did in the many years in ZBA, every case is sort of unique. So I would rather start with uh, the broad view of a person outside of the community, the, the Baywa people came from very far away to talk about their project, a significant project, especially for the landowners that had leases um, that would benefit from that, the tax bases that would benefit. Uh, if I was not local to the community but interested in investing in this um, and I saw a mile and a half as part of the ordinance, I would look for a place that didn't have that first, not knowing any better. Um, so I think that we should start out being relatively welcoming, but still giving the villages time to comment, uh, municipalities get this extra time, and then we can deal with each case individually without starting out with a more restrictive barrier, which is what I think the mile and a half does. I think it takes some people's consideration would, wouldn't happen for want of better local knowledge. And I can't expect a person who comes from California or a person who even comes from, uh, you know, far away in this state to be completely knowledgeable on how the ELOC works, how the ZBA works, how the county board works down here. So that's why I would, I would prefer to uh, and would support the, the draft in attachment B. Ms. Rotato. Yeah, I, I would echo that because I kind of feel like it's maybe a happy medium. It would give more time, and so say a community like St. Joe's came and said, hey, look, this solar farm was here. We had a chance to look at it, but look at our comprehensive plan that's right in the path of it. That's something certainly I would, you know, take into account. But but then, like you said, that doesn't mean that folks are not just going to look, start looking further out, but it would give us more time to have that conversation, right, um, so that we could have that conversation. And unrelated to that, I just wanted to mention um, maybe – um, for the next packet, making sure we with the page numbers are are on it. Yeah, because I'm having a little bit I of hard, hard I noticed time. the page yeah, numbers and, and didn't get put on the individual yeah. pages. Um, yeah, but that's I, I I thought I noticed in the last one, and then I was like, hey, maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, okay, thanks. But I, I to echo what you said. I think similar thoughts. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor, and it's been seconded. Any further discussion, comments? Mr. Patterson. Quick question. Done. Uh, what about emails and name mention of permits, stuff like that? Could you explain that process? Um, for this particular version of the amendment, you should expect to get a municipal protest because um, we know that municipalities are, in fact, requesting something else. And uh, to override a municipal protest takes uh, affirmative vote of 17 board members when it comes down to the county board vote. Uh, so I just wanted to make you bring that to your attention. So, but if this, if we didn't get 17 vote board members, it would just revert back to the way it currently is. Yeah, if you if uh, there is a municipal protest and you can't get 17 affirmative members, then uh, this could not be adopted and the ordinance would stay the way it is. So it would just be without the time. Okay. And John, just it, I mean, it, the way discussions go, it doesn't sound like it would happen. But um, I suppose somebody else could propose a motion for C as well. 
to add that back in. But I mean, it's kind of sounding like that's probably not going to happen. Right. Or, yeah. Or here. But. Yeah. The, the way this was yeah. prepared, yeah. the committee could send both of these to a public yeah. hearing, have the public hearing, and then uh, take action at the end of the public hearing. We just wanted to kind of clear, clarify that that we aren't necessarily automatically throwing C out, or the, which would be the mile and a half initially. Are you pondering a friendly amendment, Stephanie? I mean, I I hesitate to send something to a public hearing if we're just, you know what I mean? Like I, like I said last time, I don't like empty steps, but I don't know. Is it worth it to have further discussion on C? Because if we vote no, then that's it, right? It's not being talked about anymore. And the public hearing would be at the, the ZBA. I'll, I'll friendly amend it. Okay, to so the friendly C. amendment would be to send both B and C to the public hearing and let the public speak. Okay, that's uh, agreeable. Does the second agree? I yeah. believe we need the second. Okay. Yes. You have something to yeah, I go have ahead. A question. So, just to clarify the process um, tonight, we would be sending it back to uh, ZBA, and then it would come back to us when. When that's a good question. Um, I would, I doubt that it would be here sooner than three to four months. Okay. Because we we have to take about a month to get it advertised, and right now, we don't even have a suitable meeting for about a month, so that's about two months. And at the ZBA itself, normally it takes at least a month for the ZBA to work through, so that would be th that would be for three months. So three months is probably pretty likely. Um, yeah, I guess I'm also supportive of uh, sending both of these to the uh, ZBA so that there could be a dialogue about it. I mean, I know their agendas are public, but could you um, maybe just shoot us an email when you know w when it's going to be heard? So sure. just in case our schedules work out, so maybe we could go hear the public part of that public hearing. Okay. Sure. And to add to that, uh, I want to make sure that if we're going to have the public hearing, uh, I know that the, the villages and municipalities will come. I want to make sure that the people who have previously applied or are considering applying for permits, if we have a mechanism to notify at least past applicants that we're going to have a hearing about changing this ordinance that affected them when they applied for theirs. Okay, but the way this is written, uh, any solar farm that's been approved is nonconforming. Is right? is not affected by this. It's not affected by it, but they may then network out with people who are thinking about the next one. Okay. Um, I want to make sure if we're going to talk about it that everybody talks about it because, like the mayor of St. Joe. I know that it costs a lot more to put a solar farm a mile and a half from the substation than a half a mile, but I don't know the numbers. I would like to know the numbers. I'd like to know the power loss, the viability. I'd also want to hear from landowners who maybe are interested in leasing land to this because this is good income, especially a year like this year where they can make some money on land they have that they're not going to make a lot of money otherwise, and how it would affect them and whether we have a difference of opinion in people that are close to town, potential leasees, and people that are further out. So just curious. Further discussion before we vote? Okay, and I believe everyone here understands what's going on. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Thank you. Uh, we'll then move on to, we have addendum three which is C, County Removal of Garbage and Debris at 2712 East Main Street, Urbana. Uh, that was one correction I d forgot to make. It actually should be under, it's, it, it's under the right number. It just titled wrong. Instead of items to be recommended to the county board, it's items up to be approved by ELUC. Um, John, do you want to speak to this first? Sure, and I apologize for that error in the labeling. Um, there's a packet of photos and um, this is the property that uh, Kelly Reynolds spoke about at the last meeting. 
Um, we had this case at the state's attorney's office, but in previous experiences with this same property and same landowner, these cases just drag out. The court gives lots of time for the landowner to try and get things cleaned up. And we've done that once on this property. So we thought we would come to the committee and ask. Um, we've got an estimate for cleaning this property up, $3,700. That's half of what we have in our property cleanup line item. So we have the funds. Um, we've never done it where we've cleaned up a property with a with an unfriendly landowner, but we gave the state's attorney a heads up. They've, they've asked for a court date three weeks from now, so we're ready to move forward on this if you want us to spend. I can't guarantee it's going to be 3700 but um, it shouldn't be over 5000 We have plenty of money in our, in our budget to do this, and if you look back through some of these photos, um, I don't even want to try to imagine what this might be like come August. And we've done this once before uh, on a nearby property after neighbors lived through a couple of summers putting up with this, the county board decided to go ahead and clean up the garbage and debris. So. Go ahead, Stephanie. If we go in and clean it up and then just like in three years it's back, I mean, how, how does that work? Well, uh, if you go in and clean it up, we will put a lien against the property and hopefully get some fines to try and discourage this in the future. But with this landowner, we might even try to get um, like a continuing injunction or something so that if it, if it does start to happen again, we can go right back to court. Further discussion or someone care to make a... Oh, Mr. Mr. Yes, Rosales. Yes, John, do you usually serve these summonses uh, with a sheriff? Can you go clean up or I would hate to see some, you know, yeah, something yeah, we, happen. The sheriff is always uh, happy to uh, come along when we need them. Okay, great. Thank you. Good question. Um, further discussion or someone care to make a motion? Mr. Patterson. Do, do we have any idea of how much staff time in the state attorney's office goes into a case like this as far as cost? Um, days of attorney's time. At, by the end of the process, it's been days of attorney's times. It's, it's really expensive. And also, how many of, how often do we do this? Um, cleaning up a property like this, we've only done it one other time. Now, we have done, typically we would clean it up after we acquire the property. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done that maybe a handful of times. Um, we have several cases at the state's attorney's office right now, similar cases, not quite as egregious as this, so we're not, you know, we're, we're proposing to take the normal route with those. But uh, I think you can expect to have one or two of these every year permanently. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess, so you said that we've only done, but specifically like this, only like one other time. So uh, is there anything that's uh, unique or that was specific about this case that led to us taking this action? Uh, well, in this case, uh, our zoning officer, Jamie Hitt, was in contact with this landowner starting uh, in the fall of 18. She called him and said, look, I haven't gotten any complaints, but I can see the property is bad. You should get something done about this. And she contacted him throughout the winter. And finally, in the spring, the neighbor was fed up and, and came to our office. So we've never done something like this before where we, we did drive-bys and courteously contacted the owner to let him know before we had complaints. It made no difference. Well, it made no apparent difference. Who knows how bad it might have been otherwise? I don't know. But um, we've been trying to, to, to be more proactive on things like this. Now, this was also a convenient property to drive by. If this had been more remote, Yes, <laughs> so so we're doing what we can on this particular property, but we couldn't do this on all. Yeah, I guess I just want to say is like I understand that uh, people who live in the county um, are in a, a spot where, particularly for tenants, they can become vulnerable because unfortunately they don't have the resources or some of the power just the way the city does. And you know, it's 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 frustrating to have people who come before us and um, you know 
concerned about the data type, and it feels good to have somebody who comes in here, shows me a picture of an interesting doc like Zog, and then being able to come back and do something about it. So thank you for uh, presenting it. I would happily make the motion then. Go right ahead, Mr. Thorson. I'd make a motion to go ahead and have the county clean up that garbage uh, using the funds available, or however you want to phrase that motion. Second, so move by Mr. Thorsland to clean up the property, um, and seconded by Mr. Patterson. No true financial limit set, but hoping it's around the thir realizing it may not be thirty seven hundred, but hopefully no more than five. But we've got it in the budget. So now we've had a motion. Open it up once again, just for quick discussion, last minute thoughts. Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Thank you. Okay, we'll then move on to 10 new business items. Items to receive and place on file by ELEC committee to allow a review period until August 8th, 2019. We have A, proposed minor amendments to land resource management plan. Um, I'll ask for a motion first on this one, please. Moved by Ms. Furtado, is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Thorslin. Uh, Ms. Monte, do you want to speak to this? It's pretty straightforward. One amendment proposed a minor amendment to Volume 1, Conditioning Trends, and that would be the update, five-year update of Census of Agricultural Data, and a second amendment that is minor to the Land Use Management Areas map to update the boundaries, <coughs> and annexations, and extraterritorial jurisdiction boundaries. So it doesn't sound like anything really out of the ordinary. Um, further discussion on this? Any discussion on this? Mr. Thorslin? Well, I would just say au contraire. It's infinitely interesting, Susan. Thank you for making it in a separate packet as well so I can hang it on my wall. Uh, I like it. So. Thank you. It, it, the. Um, Census of Ag County Profile for Champaign County for 2017 is, is sort of interesting if you have a chance to take a look at that. There's a steady decline in the number of farms in the county, so that's an interesting trend. But yeah, and it's all self-reported, so it's limited by that. Further discussion before we vote? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Okay, on to 11 new business items to be recommended to the county board. We have A, case 936-AM-19, a request by Jeff and Jolene Gensler to amend the zoning map to change the zoning district designation from the current AG1 Agriculture Zoning District to the proposed AG2 Agriculture Zoning District in order to allow a two-family dwelling as a proposed special use in related zoning case 937-S-19 and subject to the requested variance in related zoning case 938-V-19 on a 0.69-acre tract in the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter of Section 16 Township 21 North, Range 9 East of the 3rd Principal Meridian in Rantoul Township, and commonly known as the Farmstead with an address of 2740 County Road 1400 East, Rantoul. Is there such a motion? A motion. Moved by Mr. Thorsland, seconded by Ms. Furtado. Uh, discussion, or John, do you want to speak to this first? Um, if... if Committee members have any questions, I'm happy to speak to it. The owner could not be here tonight. Um, this whole case revolves around making your house uh, suitable for your aging parent to live with you. And unfortunately, um, there was a medical condition at the family today, so the owner couldn't be here. But uh, I, you know, I think for that reason, this was all well-intended changes. And now with this uh, MAP amendment and the special use approved by the ZBA, this will all come into conformance with the zoning. Thank you. Discussion. Mr. Patterson. This is a uh, mother-in-law suite and official terminology for a family. 
it's an unofficial terminology. We don't allow those in the ordinance. Um, it's one of the longstanding issues with our ordinance. We've never found a way to, uh, to get those things allowable. And everybody knows with our aging society, those issues just become more pronounced all the time. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes unanimously. Uh, we'll then on to what is B, closed session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C6 to consider the setting of a price for lease or sale of property owned by Champaign County. Uh, is there a motion to move into closed session? Move by Mr. Passion, second by Mr. Thorsland. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Oh, yeah. Yeah, technically we do, don't we? Uh, ask for the roll to be called, please. <laughs> I have no, no reason why you can't stay that, from what I know, Darlene. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, we will need to step into the other room. Yeah, yeah, we will need to step into the other room. I hadn't, I hadn't forgot about the forgot about the recording part. So, but no, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, yeah. So, so we'll. Yeah. Okay. So, we don't, we don't need roll call. We can just voice vote on at the committee level. Okay. Okay, yeah, so, okay, just voice vote on going into closed session. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. That's approved. We'll go into the other room and come back out and carry on. And recording secretary and county executive are able to be a meet with us.
Okay, we're back uh, to reestablish a quorum. We need another roll call, please. Patterson? Thorsman? Here. Eisenman? Cortado? Scott? King Taylor? And Esri? Uh, present. And we still have a quorum with the original four. Uh, okay, we're then on to 12. Other business, we have a March 2019 monthly report. Closed session. Good. Um, John, do you, do you have anything specific to point out about the monthly report? Any questions, discussion on it? Seeing none, we'll, we will receive and replace those on file. Uh, we have then move on to B, cancellation of July 4th, 2019, ELUC meeting. Um, Mr. Thorsland, I don't know if you're aware, but we generally all committee, well, I think you're aware in the agenda meeting, generally all committees, we tend to cancel in July any, 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 any business that needs to be, any business need, that needs to happen, we take care of at the full county board, um, but usually July's pretty slow. So is there a motion a as such? Does someone care to make a motion? To, to cancel, to cancel the July July meeting. Yeah, we moved by Mr. Patterson. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Thorsland. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Um, I guess I should have maybe instead of going straight to chair's report, maybe go back then to seven with the information only. So we'll go. Not that I have a church report, but um, we'll go back to then 7A, which is the new business for information only. A, land resource management conditions relevant to Champaign County 2019 annual update. Ms. Monty. Hi, that uh, covers population trends, and uh, there, there's about four bullet points that point out the major trends. Uh, county population has increased by 4.4%. Since 2010, Muhammad and Savoy have each experienced the greatest proportionate amount of population increase, and a total of 15 of the 22 municipalities lo located wholly within Champaign County experienced population decline since 2010. And then uh, population estimate for the unincorporated portions of Champaign County increased 1.4% since 2010. Thank you. Discussion on this. Okay, um, Mr. Thorsland is needing to um, check out. So in that, I mean, well, uh, le leaves to this meeting. I shouldn't say check out. That's just my my poor terminology. My poor terminology. He's not checking out. He needs to go pick up his wife. So anyway, um, chair's report. I have. I'll go back to the where we were on thirteen chair's report. I have none. But to get designation of items fourteen. Um, to be placed on the consent agenda, that would be A, and that's it. Be um, and closed session. Okay, yeah, B, yeah, the B goes on. Yeah, the, the that goes on the consent agenda too. Yeah, advance that. That's correct. That'd be yep, eleven A and B. What's that? No, that's just it. Yeah, that's just it. Um, and with that, I truly don't know. I think we're okay to continue getting the information only, or do we? Or um, if, if without a quorum, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a note. You know, I'm to those watching in the future and or presently. We're going to be without a quorum, but the remaining items are information only. We are there is no action to be taken at all, so we're going to go ahead and proceed with those. Um, we were then at B at seven B, the May two thousand nineteen residential electronics collection results. Uh, Ms. Monty, hi. I've uh, outlined the the major four points about this latest collection. Uh, it broke records as far as highest attendance and greatest number of participants, largest community service worker group, and largest amount collected. So 
we're getting more efficient with these one-day collections. It's a lot of planning and it's a lot of coordination, but it's very effective, I guess. Any questions here? Uh, we filled nine semi trucks. I, the, the contractor does. Did that work? They're like machines. And they're packed in pretty good. I, I uh, yeah, it's, a, it's I mean, an art. Yeah. Those pallets. It's something to see if you've ever been through the <laughs> one. Discussion? Well, go ahead. Discussion. We kind of talked in the past about how uh, the the design of newer TVs makes it easier to uh, dispose of them. So, do you think that our like um, looking at truckloads? Are we per truck taking a lot more units? Uh, it is measured by weight trucks are. So there's that, and then. Yeah, because the, the newer LED flat screen TVs, they are still a challenge to recycle and reuse, but not as much as the lead, leaded glass. So I'm not answering your question. Uh, there's five-year forecasts out there that indicate we will still see the cathode ray tube lead, leaded glass for at least five more years. It, it'll be interesting to see the curve where that starts to decline. These collections are so huge they may not be necessary in the future. It'd be more convenient to have a, a one like a, a facility where it would be open once or twice a month, for example, that rather than stage these huge huge collections. So that's the direction we hope to be headed in. Mr. Rosales, the question okay. was where do we ship the nine trucks? Yeah. To? Okay. So the county uh, operates as part of a state program, which is funded by manufacturers that sell retail electronics in Illinois. So they take care of the cost for processing and transportation. And so there's a whole system of uh, checks and balances to make to assure that quality and high standards and security standards are met. So um, we work with uh, an MRM company in out of Minneapolis. I mean, we're in a region of, of the state. It's all divided up in a region. I mean, it's a whole program that's been developed it's statewide. So it's, a, it's an advance this year in 2019, first year it's been implemented. So we're part of a, a part of the state of Illinois that works with a company called Dynamic, and they're out of northern Illinois, and they probably have plants like in adjacent states, for example, where they send stuff to be processed. But we process that in the United States. Right. For the, if it does get exported, there are strict strict standards that it cannot be handled incorrectly. You're welcome. Further questions, discussion? We'll then move on to C, the IEPA application for one day household hazardous waste collection update. Ms. Yeah. Monty. I have this on the agenda just to remind everyone that we're in year seven of waiting to be selected to have a one day HHW collection. And so each year we have to like scramble and look for a host site. So that's that's the only reason this is on the agenda, to let you know that we're, we're looking at that right now. We hope to get selected for the fall, but uh, and likely we'll be using the Marketplace Mall pavement uh, parking lot area that where the Costco is going to be constructed. Thank and, you. And that costs oh. like $1,000 at least. Does that raise any questions? Discussion. Seeing none, we'll then go on to D, Illinois Senate Bill 0009. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to make sure everybody had access to this information. You probably already have heard about Senate Bill 9 in Illinois that has passed. It's a groundbreaking Coal Ash Pollution Prevention Act. It, it will impact how manufacturers are required to uh, clean up at, at their sites. Uh, in the future, it may not impact the Middle Fork uh, site out in Vermilion County. So just wanted to make sure you had that information in front of you that just happened at the end of May. So that was very exciting. And it's awaiting the governor's signature, so it's, it's going to happen very likely. Discussion on that. Ms. Furtado. So yeah, I just wanted to publicly thank uh, Senator Scott Bennett. Uh, Representative Carol Ammons and just a lot of folks from Champaign County who went to Springfield multiple times, sat out on hearings, 
testified at hearings and just put a lot of energy in, into this. It is, I think it is groundbreaking. Um, and, I, and it was a bipartisan eff effort. Um, and I think it was exciting um, to get this done and um, so commend everybody who was involved. Thank you. Uh, then we'll move on to um, E, Dyna G, redesigning Middle Fork River Bank Stabilization Project. Okay, this is uh, a follow-up since the ELUC has been receiving updates about this, this project to clean up the coal ash pollution uh, adjacent to the Middle Fork uh, in Vermilion County. Um, it, apparently, uh, at the end of May also, we heard that they, the company Dynagy is going to redesign their controversial riverbank stabilization project. So that was very good news. And essentially, that's the bottom line there. They're, they're uh, going to look at a different solution. Uh, we don't know what exactly what the solution is, but it's in progress. They're, they're looking at going back to the drawing board, essentially. Need quick discussion on that? Seeing none, then we'll go to F, final item for tonight, <laughs> I believe. Um, the IEPA notice RCRA permit renewal at 2006 Griffiths, Griffiths Drive, Urbana. Uh, this is just the standard. We've seen these before that there's a hazardous waste kind of a collection site. You can see here for the Illinois main campus. Um, and that's the location of it. It's just a notification that they're renewing their permit. Nothing, I mean, we can discuss it, but there's nothing that we can do about it. It's just letting us know that that's a site in the county. So with no further discussion on that, I'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you.